In Georgia this morning, joining me right now is former House Speaker, former Georgia Congressman and Fox News contributor and author of the book, Defeating Bi Big Government Socialism. Newt Gingrich is here, uh, Defeating Big Government Socialism, exactly what we need to be talking about right now. Newt, it's good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. What's your read on the Georgia Senate runoff? How are you feeling about the uh, race right now? Look, I think Connell had it exactly right. Uh, if there's a big turnout today, Herschel Walker will win. And frankly, uh, with Governor Kemp, who has the best organization in the state and is the most popular politician in the state, uh, Governor Kemp has put his shoulder to the wheel, and he's been out actively campaigning, and his team has been out campaigning. So I have some hope that they will, by the end of the day, have to turn out a big turnout. Uh, I do think that in parts of rural Georgia, small-town Georgia, they've had a bigger-than-normal early vote. So I think that... Uh, while Warnock is ahead in the early vote, I don't think he's quite as much ahead as he was back uh, in, in the general election. But I think this is clearly a day where uh, Herschel's got to come from behind, which he's done for his whole career, uh, and he's got to uh, have a big enough turnout today. Uh, it, it does, and Connell was exactly right. There's a huge difference between a 50-50 Senate, which has divided power, and a 51-49 Democratic Senate. In a 50-50 Senate, they split the committees evenly, and uh, the Democrats can't report things out by a party-line vote. In a 51-49 Senate, uh, the Democrats will have every single uh, committee will have a majority Democrat, and they'll be able to report things out in a straight party-line vote. So this is a surprisingly important election, the second time in two years that Georgia's had a surprisingly important uh, runoff. And I think, uh, from a standpoint of conservatives, uh, people have got to really hope that everyone uh, will turn out to vote for Herschel. Yeah. So explain a little further what that means. I mean, the ramifications of this race. If we're in a 51-49 Senate with the Democrats in the majority, they've got the power on subpoenas. They've got the power on investigations. And certainly they've got the, uh, the power on two more years of Joe Biden appointed judges, cabinet, regulators, right? That's exactly right. I mean, I think people underestimate how big a difference there is between a 50-50 Senate. So uh, the election of Herschel Walker would, uh, in fact, empower uh, s uh, several Democratic senators to use their negotiating skills, as they did in the last Senate, uh, and to force some changes that, that the Democrats may not want. But at 51-49, uh, I, I think you're going to find, for example, that Senator Manchin has had almost all of his leverage eliminated. Uh, and they can ignore him and still win on a 50-50 vote with Kamala Harris, the vice president, casting the tie, or breaking the tie, rather. So uh, this is a very important race, much more important than I think people realized early on. And I think that as word got out, and again, I, I give Governor Kemp a lot of credit, uh, he has really worked hard to get across that if you're a Georgia conservative, you need to vote today and you need to make sure that your friends and neighbors vote. Uh, and if that works, if the same team that... Uh, Governor Kemp got 200,000 more votes than Herschel did in the first That's round. Right. So if that same team can turn out Governor Kemp's vote, I think Herschel will have a surprisingly good victory. If they can't, if people cannot be motivated to vote, then I think uh, Senator Warnock might slide back in. Newt, uh, Politico is reporting that Fred Upton, who's a Republican, who voted to impeach uh, President Trump, could gain Democrat support. To become the next House Speaker, I spoke with Kevin McCarthy on Sunday Morning Futures uh, about the fight underway here for him to clinch that uh, House Speaker role. Here's what he said. If people don't come along, that's going to delay our ability to secure the border. That's going to delay our ability to become energy independents. That's going to delay our ability to repeal 87,000 IRS agents. That's going to delay our ability to hold government accountable. There's no subpoena that can go out until that gets done. And right now, it's actually delaying our ability to govern as we go. So I'm hopeful that everybody comes together, finds a way to govern together. Uh, this is what the American people want. Otherwise, we'll be squandering this majority. So what do you think? Where is this going, Newt? He already won 85 percent well, of the support, but this final stretch is harder than he expected. Well, it, it is harder. That's partly because, although he has exactly the same majority that Nancy Pelosi had, but she had a machine, and he has a bunch of independent Republicans. So they're, it's very different for Republicans to try to run the House than for a Democrat. 
because of the difference in the culture of the two parties. But I would say this. The, the five or six Republicans who are throwing a temper tantrum really need to stop. They're all very conservative. There's not a single moderate in the group that's mad. Now, do they really want Upton with the Democrats governing the House? I mean, how will they go home and explain to their constituents that after the Republicans won a majority, and remember, with, with McCarthy's leadership, the House Republicans gained in 20, and they gained in 22, while the Senate Demo Republicans have been losing for three straight elections. So McCarthy has, has earned being Speaker. He went out and campaigned. These guys didn't go out and campaign. He raised the money. They didn't raise the money. He created the commitment to America. They didn't. Uh, and these five or six guys who are out here being, uh, frankly, throwing a temper tantrum really need to stop and ask themselves, you really want the Democrats with Fred Upton running the House? And I like Fred. He's a good friend. But, but he clearly is not somebody that any of these five or six hard right uh, members would be comfortable with. And I think they need to understand they're playing with fire here. This is very dangerous. Kevin McCarthy has earned it. Everything he's done since the election has been solid conservative activities. Uh, launching this week the, the Select Committee on China, uh, indicating he's going to take at least three Democrats off their committees because they're so totally irresponsible. Uh, fighting to eliminate the vaccine mandate for the Defense Department. I mean, these are all solid conservative things. Committing to repeal the uh, 87,000 IRS agents on the very first day. So I'm, I'm really puzzled by what the gripe is of the five or six hardliners who are basically throwing a temper tantrum. And they really are in danger of putting the Democrats back in charge despite the election. And that would, frankly, I mean, their, their districts, I think, would repudiate every one of them if they became the agents for a Democratic speakership. Well, that's the difference between the Democrats and the Republicans. One difference, Nancy Pelosi kept everybody together. Whatever way she wanted to go, they right. all got in line. That is not the case for the Republicans. Uh, and this is uh, showing again uh, in this fight. Newt, it's always good to see you. Right. Thanks very much. Oops.